Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Waller's Wallet, and in this video, I got to sit down and talk to one of the best points and miles experts in the award travel game. And while we're shooting the video, the quality of the video looked pretty good while shooting it, but unfortunately in the post-production editing of this video, I'm not sure what happened, but it turned out to be a little bit more grainy and occasionally more pixelated than I really would have liked. But the quality of the content in this video is top notch from Spencer as he is one of the best points and miles experts in the award travel game. So I do apologize for probably the less and stellar video quality, but I do believe you will learn a lot from him because he has so much information about points and miles that I felt that it was still worth putting this video out, even though the video quality may not be that great. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoy it because he is one of the best in the award travel game. Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Waller's Wallet and today I am super excited to be joined by one of the best points and mile gurus in the game, Spencer Howard. Spencer, thank you for coming on the channel. How are you doing, man? Hey, doing well. Thanks for having me. Of course. So for those of you who don't know Spencer, Sp Spencer has written for quite a few different blogs. He's been in the points and miles game for quite a while now. He currently writes over at Straight to the Points and even God Save the Points. And he puts out some super in-depth, great, amazing articles to really show you how you can maximize your points and get some great redemptions for there. Um, so if you haven't checked out God Save the Points or Straight to the Points, I'll put a link in the description below, but I think you definitely should check them out. Now, I know some of you think I'm pretty good at this stuff for the award travel, but Spencer is leagues and bounds ahead of me in this. So buckle up and get ready to learn some awesome information from one of the best in the game. So Spencer, why don't you start off and tell us how you got started in the Points of Miles game? Yeah, I think kind of like most people, I just wanted to travel more and wanted to find a way to do it without breaking, I guess, my bank account. Um, so, yeah, I, I was God, I was just working in an office job at the time, and it was the first. I, I'd worked in politics for years, and oh, vacation was vacation was looked at as like, well, you don't care about what we're working on? Like, <laughs> why, why don't you want to be here all day, every day? So it was a uh, first job I had where it was like, no, you should, take your, you should take your vacation days. And I honestly didn't believe them at first, but... I started with just like finding the cheapest tickets I could, I could find to Europe or Asia or wherever and just went. Um, but <laughs> while doing that, I was like, would be nice to sit up front. <laughs> and like at six, three, I was really like wanting to stretch out a little bit on those long flights and stumbled into finding some points, websites and kind of, I guess went down a rabbit hole. I mean, I think I spent like four hours a night for like six months doing nothing, but <laughs> like, yeah read about points just to try to understand all of it no but uh, i hear you on that one yeah that was okay. that was the beginning of it and I, very cool so you also have a newsletter too that you send out to people alerting people about business class or first class tickets as well did you want to talk about that i'll also i'll also link that in the description below so you should definitely sign up for that newsletter from spencer yeah it's yeah straight to the points um i call it my award alerts newsletter um I'm looking mostly for like four or more business class seats, um, sometimes two, just depending on the route. Um, and if it's first class, definitely like two or more. Just, I just found that, you know, from, for someone like me who travels solo quite a bit, it's, it can be a lot easier to find award space. But then right. I've met so many like couples or just like travel buddies, like friends who want to go somewhere or even families. And it's just really hard to find the award space for multiple people if you want to sit in business or first. Yeah. And I mean, there's just, you know, people are earning points. They may as well find a way to use them the way they want. And so I'm just trying to make it a little easier for them. Um, and I just, I mean, we, I truly go through like the exact dates you need, what you're flying, what the experience will be like, best ways to book. And then like kind of a basic how to book. Um, so it's just, just trying to make it as easy as possible for yeah. people who want to get out there with their friends and family. Like I said, if you haven't subscribed to that yet, I'll put a link in the description below. Definitely do it because it is freaking awesome and the information that Spencer gives out to you. So, you know, let's get into it. Um, I wanted to pick your bane, brain about some award travel uh, because, like I said, you're one of the best out there. So I think a lot of people can learn from you. So I have a handful of questions. I guess we'll just jump right into them. Sounds so, good. you know, when it comes to award travel, there are there are actually like, like a ton of different programs out there. So what are a couple programs or some programs that you feel people really overlook but really should just pay attention to. Yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, off the top of my head, I think Asia Miles is one. Um, I know last year they kind of changed around the program a bit and devalued in some sense, but 
it's, I mean, you can transfer points in from what, like Amex and City uh, or Amex membership or City thank you points. And I mean, that just makes it easy to earn the points. And so while the redemption rates aren't necessarily the best compared to some other programs, it can be easier for a lot of people to use them. Okay. Um, so like going to Asia, just on Cathay Pacific on their own flights, like you can include a stopover on, on just a one-way ticket. And if you're flying from like the East Coast, like I am, it's 85,000 miles uh, for a one-way business class ticket. But that's like on their distance-based chart, that's the top tier. So there's, no, there's not another level. So 85,000 miles in business for a one-way ticket is as high as it's going to get. And it so includes can, a stopover. And that includes a stopover. So I can that's fly awesome. from like washington or new york and go to hong kong stop over and then continue on to somewhere else in asia or even south africa or australia though award space is tough there but you know it's it's a really interesting way to do that additionally like people flying like british airways to europe the surcharges are really high but for some reason when you book with asia miles they're like half instead of spending 12 14 1600 on taxes and fees Booking with American miles, you could spend about like 800 for a round trip uh, in business. Um, That's a lot British better than 1600 for sure. Absolutely. And again, I'm not saying it's cheap, but it's a lot better. And if that's the only award space that's available when you need to go, like it's a nice little kind of hack to get the most out of your points. Right. So that was a long winded no. pitch for Asia Miles. <laughs> Asia Miles? No, I know there's a lot of value in Asia Miles. They're, they're, they're not as easy to use for some people because it's not everything bookable online. So you have to do a little bit yeah. more work in order yeah. to get the value from them. For sure. And then, I mean, similarly, like two other programs that, again, you can't always book things online, but they have a lot of values like Etihad Guest and Virgin Atlantic Flying Club. Etihad Guest, I mean, you have to call no matter what <laughs> if you're booking a partner. <laughs> Um, but I found the like call centers are pretty good. Um, or the call, I think it's Serbia is where they have the call center and they've been good when I've talked to them. Uh, Virgin Atlantic has probably the, I think the best call center <laughs> in yeah. the industry. So calling them is totally fine in my experience. And you can yeah. like, but Virgin Atlantic lets you hold awards for two days, which makes it even easier. So you can lock in the space before you transfer. That, so. is, that is one awesome feature it's, about Virgin uh, Atlantic for sure. Yeah. And I mean, the, both of those, like Etsy had and Virgin, like they just, they're not part of major alliances, but they have great individual partnerships. So it's a, it's a little more work on the front end just to kind of figure out how you can use them. But then after you figure that out, it's, you know, there's just a lot of opportunity there. That like Virgin Atlantic, I, I personally am like a big fan of Virgin Atlantic because they're so easy to earn. One, they're just so yeah. easy to earn. I mean, right now it's a 30% bonus transfer from American Express, I think. And you get some pretty solid redemptions. I know like with the 120,000 from the East Coast on A&A first class, yep. um, you know, unbelievable. you get, yeah, the 50,000, was it 50,000 to Europe on Delta one? And, um, you know, as a coach flyer myself, I actually found for 50,000 round trip and like a hundred dollars, you can fly Singapore airlines coach from, uh, to Germany. So, yeah. you know, it's, there's some good value, I think there. And I think people tend to look at just, um, the easier programs and not look into these non-alliance partners. Yeah. And I think that's normal. I mean, when you start getting outside of the United's, Delta's, Americans, maybe even Alaska Airlines, you've once you've left the U.S. and you start exploring, like it's not I don't think the first instinct, but there's a lot of value to be had in those programs that aren't based in the U.S. My next question is when it comes to points, people always talk about the value they receive from there. So what program or which program do you think offers the most value for their points? The one that gets you what you want. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, it's. Uh, I, I think Alaska Airlines is always kind of up there because of its really solid redemption rates. I mean, yep. 50000 for a one-way in business on Cathay from the U.S. to Asia is fantastic, especially when you can include a stopover. Um, I mean, 70000 for first. Um, like, that's just, that's just tough to beat. And honestly, like, the, the, the 70000 one is great because you can actually, you can continue to, like, you know, Dubai or South Africa on a mm -hmm. business class flight, they don't fly first on that route, but you can continue in business for no extra miles. Uh, I've actually done that. I, <laughs> I flew from New York to Hong Kong, did a stopover, and then continued on to Johannesburg. 70,000 mm -hmm. miles, first class flight over, and then business class flight. Like, that's insane. You know, I think one thing people talk about with Alaska miles, they're just not really part of any big transfer partners. Yep. But do you have their Cobra and their credit cards, which are now at 40,000 right now? Yeah, I think that's uh, right. Bonus, which is a pretty good chunk. And I think, you know, there's always talk about Alaska joining. They should join, you know, Ultimate Rewards or some flexible currency. <laughs> but 
the second they do that, they're going to ha- I, I feel like they would have to devalue their program because that's why they're so valuable. They're so hard to earn. Yeah, it's uh, I mean, they aren't the easiest. Marriott points do transfer. But again, those aren't very easy to earn these days um, yeah. unless you're staying at Marriott's a lot. Um, but again, it's the program has some really good value. It's just a matter of earning the points. Um, alternatively, I think Life Miles is one that people, for, I mean, sometimes actually forget about. And it's I understand why people who are experienced with miles and points don't like using them sometimes because they're a little bit of a pain. But yeah. um, if it works, you can get some great value and skip surcharges, which is nice. And right. you know, it's I have friends who've booked Lufthansa First with them, and you know Lufthansa First will have you know what five hundred dollars of surcharges for a one way, and right. being able to just pay the tax, this like the standard taxes and fees instead of the surcharges is really nice. So that's that's a great great plus. Um, they also have really good redemption rates generally, so that's good. Um, I'm trying to go through like <laughs> alliances here, and then like <laughs> on. So basically, we've done One World and uh, Star Alliance, and then Sky Team. I look at like Flying Blue. Mm-hmm. Um, surcharges can be annoying, but the promo awards, like you can just if if they're flying into a city that's convenient for you for those promo awards, like there's just killer deals there. So I, you know, I I one thing I like about them is the fact that they're just one well, again. Flying Blue points are so easy to earn, and like yep. with those promos, you know, e- even if with the promos and then you have like transfer bonuses on top of it. So you can score some really good deals. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, I always tell people don't think just about that, like nonstop. Cause like if they're running the promo from Europe to New York, don't think like, you know, because air France and KLM are the two airlines, don't think Paris and Amsterdam think like Prague because the business class flight to Prague is actually fewer miles because of the way flying blue is put together there award program and so when it's a standard 53,000 miles and I mean they have in the last year run like 50% off promos and if you're booking you know what is that 26,500 miles for a one-way business class ticket sure the taxes and fees are like $250 but you're also using like less than a lot of economy one-way tickets to Europe yeah I mean what most are like 25,000 on a good day yeah, and, and you know, so for the same amount, yeah, that's a good value for your points in general. A, it's a fun way to kind of maximize what you're doing, and you have to think about like, or in the sense, are you uh, points rich and cash poor, or like points poor and cash rich? Like, what I don't know. It's always like this little balance of like when the surcharges are going to be important to you, but right, you know, it's uh, I think there's some great value in that program. So, what is your favorite award program, even your in like what your favorite flexible currency? Well, favorite, I'm, I feel like I'm on record for saying that City Thank You Points are my favorite because they're like the forgotten points yep. program. Um, I think I did a talk that actually was titled The Forgotten Points Program. Um, I, I just think they've got some great partners that that and the program has made the other programs more valuable to people. Mm-hmm. So, I, I mean, I earn membership awards, City Thank You Points, like yep. Chase Ultimate Awards. Like I earn them all, but it's the kind of how they work together that makes each of them more valuable in my right. mind. So if you want to use Singapore miles and like say you want to do that like bucket list Singapore suites flight, you <laughs> can use Ultimate Rewards, but why not use City and then save the Ultimate Rewards for like a Hyatt stay? Because like mm-hmm. Chase's real like advantage over the other two is that it has Hyatt and it has like a really good hotel partner. Right. So don't just, you know, just because you're used to transferring chase or something don't do that necessarily when there's like overlap between the partners um, right so i like the kind of interplay between them and city thank you points i've found have made it a lot easier um, okay. i also like that they were the first to add life miles and then they added they've added turkish which has some like interesting uh like sweet spots there um, they've got Qantas, which is a great way to book ll okay uh, and you know most people don't think about flying LL because like not many people know that that's the like national airline in Israel. Um, right. But they've started to roll out their Dreamliners. They've got a nice product going nonstop to the U.S. from like JFK. So okay. actually JFK and Newark. So there's just a lot of like fun little things you can do with City Thank You Points that most people don't think about. City Thank You Points are not typically the one people give me. So that is, that is actually really awesome because I feel like City has the opportunity to be like awesome and then like they like dip their toe in the water and like we could do this and then like 
They pull back a little. They pull back. Like you know what? It's not the water's not the water's too cold right now. But I can never tell with them. Like they've they've upped the uh, the prestige now. Gets what five x on uh, travel or what travel, but airfare, airfare yeah. and uh, dining. And as someone who loves <laughs> city thank yeah. you points, I was like, this is great. <laughs> um, so you know, I think so. the prestige, like while they devalued it from what we knew it a couple years ago. Yeah. It's still a pretty solid card, and they've made some positive changes to it. I know people I, – one thing I got, I think when I actually reviewed it, there people were like, oh, that fourth night free benefit, you know, it's, it's crap bad. now. Like, it sucks. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. Like, it's like they devalued it, but is there's not another card, a premium card that gives you even yeah. – that benefit even one. So, yeah, well, for sure. well, it's not what we knew it. It's still a really it's solid card. It's a good card. It's um, – I, I think there's always been this kind of – balance of like which card has the best like trip delay and baggage delay uh protection versus which card earns like the most points and the city prestige card now takes the sapphire reserve like trip delay and baggage delay of like six hours and then you get the 500 dollars to cover things yeah. and combined it with the 5x that the amex platinum was earning on flights and so you've got like the best of both worlds there yeah um so it's I think it's a card that shouldn't be overlooked. Um, okay. But yeah, it is It is disappointing on the fourth night free. I've probably used that way more than other people just because mm -hmm. I just, I don't know, I look for hotels that are cheap enough and then really good deals when you get a, <laughs> one of the nights free. Yeah, so. absolutely. And when I, spend, I spend about three months of the year traveling, so it's, uh, it's come in handy. Yeah, more international or more domestic travel? international i right. don't even like, yeah i guess it's like about three months international and then weekends here and there some time yeah. home to see my parents and yeah god how much time do i actually spend in dc <laughs> <laughs> just kind of like a placeholder for you right yeah i guess so but yeah it's i i think the city points city thank you points um are actually a really useful currency that get overlooked all right that's good to know i'll put you on record for that one yeah so um, I think most people know if you're into the award booking stuff, it, it can be quite time consuming, especially once you're starting off. And even when you get into the game a little bit more, because you start learning a little bit more, and you start yeah. checking all these different programs. Now you're like, oh, I, I expand my knowledge base. So do you have any tips for people and when it comes to booking award space or looking for award space? You know, what are some tips you have for people to make sure that it's like successful in finding what they're looking for? Yeah, I would say like for if you're just learning with book, how to book awards and like the process to go about it, start by understanding what sites to use to search each different alliance. Um, so like I always talk about like One World is very like British Airways and Qantas are generally have the the most reach across the One World alliance. American Airlines has made really great strides with their online search, and so now off the top of my head, I'm thinking like. Latam you can't find. I don't think you can't find Cafe Pacific. I'm nope. sure there's something I'm forgetting about, but like they've, I mean, you can, you can find a lot of awards based on American now. So mm -hmm. it's, you know, those, you know, British Airways, Qantas, American, great places to start. Um, if you're Star Alliance, United, because it has a calendar search option is great. And then Aeroplan is like an alternative, um, mm -hmm. is a really good one. And Sky Team, you have like the uh, Flying Blue program, you can search with either Air France or KLM. Um, okay. And that's been really a good kind of starting point. Yep. Um, Delta can be pretty good too, um, but it's just, yeah, I've had better luck with Flying it's Blue Delta. across the Atlantic. It's Delta, you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> um, but like that's, I feel like that's kind of like the base because you will get most airlines that way. Okay. There are going to be other like things you want to search, like, you know, knowing that like American has just added Etihad and it's an online search, but I'm not seeing like premium cabin space beyond okay. 30 days from departure. So you couldn't search that if you wanted to fly, if you're planning, if you're planning ahead, you okay. still need to search like Etihad. The point is like, you, you're going to learn those other little things, but mm -hmm. start with like the meat. <laughs> it's kind of like the 80, 20 rule. Like, you know, the 20% of the effort is understanding how to find these Alliance things. And then mm -hmm. you can like refine um after that um but it's that's just kind of it's like two chunks learn the alliances and then start to figure out the individual partnerships um and i will save everyone from going into like the nitty-gritty on that right now yeah. but i think that's that's kind of the the process to learning it mm -hmm. um and then you that allows you as you just kind of see what uh partners you have 
uh, or a- airline transfer partners from your points programs, like, okay, I want to use Aeroplan miles hmm. to book, you know, we'll say EVA air to Taipei and, you know, I don't know what day I want to go. So I'll search United so I can look at the calendar and like start going through that. And you just, you start to piece things together that way. Okay. Uh, and I will say like the, the longer you do it and the more time you spend doing it, the more you kind of, I like say, see the whole board, um, is about, is there, is it a valuable redemption? Well, who knows? Like, what is that compared to what, like, what are the other options? And the more you do it, the more you kind of have an instinct for like, Oh, I think there's probably something better. Um, like no one's going to remember every award chart. Um, and like, I don't remember every award chart. I remember a few that I just like, I remember redemptions that I use a lot or book for mm-hmm. clients a lot. Like it's just, that's kind of becomes a part of my like day to day, but there's so many routes out there and so many, you know, charts to work with. So as you kind of go through it more, you will start to kind of fill out the picture and okay. that makes it a lot easier, I think to feel confident in what you're doing. <laughs> um, but yeah, like I said, start with those like alliances, move to individual partnerships and, you know, give yourself time. <laughs> yes. A lot of time. You're going to spend a lot of time with coffee and yeah. a computer <laughs> and, a, and a battery charger right. to keep that battery charged to look for Watch it. Watch the show. Been... Watch yeah. the show while you're doing it. I've done that. Like yeah. my friend and I are sitting here watching a TV show and I'm over here trying to like find our tickets to something. So, you know, no. I, I hear you on that one. I spent a lot of time. I've been trying to look actually for um, A&A via Virgin Atlantic miles. I think I've probably spent like looking from different airports to make it work. They're all waitlist right now, so I'm not booking anything. Um, why, why didn't you just read my alert that I sent out? Like that? I did. I'm looking to go actually in October. <laughs> oh, and I'm like, okay. oh, January would work so well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there were so many dates at the beginning of the year, but I'm waiting for it. I'm like, I got, I got to find something. So I'm just kind of waiting for it. But yeah, that's, there's just no substitute for, for looking it up, you know, on your own and just all that time. It's definitely one of those things where the practice makes everything easier. (laughs) Yeah. It's, you just start to move through the websites a lot quicker, which means less time for you. (laughs) Absolutely. So a couple more questions. One thing we've seen happen, I think more at an accelerated rate than we've seen over the last few years and more programs starting to go this way is we've seen airlines switch to more of that dynamic pricing or dynamic awards to really prevent you from really receiving that oversized value and giving a stable price for their miles. So do you have any tips for people on how to beat the airlines here? Because, you know, if, is you know, we see United jumping into this, Americans kind of getting in there and, you know, the rumor to be in there, hotels are going that way, you know, and at the same point, have we started to reach a point in award travel where the cashback style redemptions with the Chase Sapphire Reserve 1.5 cents per point, the 35% back in your business platinum, are those starting to become like the go-tos over the, the you know, looking at those award charts and just realizing that award space is drying up unless you want like two stopovers and like 30 hours of flight time we're starting to see? Um, yeah, it's interesting to see what, you know, that whole United and American news about kind of moving towards the dynamic pricing a little more like delta Mm -hmm. um to me it's like they they still like the thing that gets me with like delta is that it's it's dynamic pricing and they can price things whatever and they don't have an award chart on which they'll release the awards as partners which would be their saver level but they just won't show you what that is publicly they won't like let us know so like travel is free has like a a delta award chart that he built by searching Mm -hmm. like the entire schedule and you can see like you know, each, each region to region kind of thing, how it should price out at the lowest level. And like, you still see Delta doesn't have variable pricing for partners. It just has it for its own flights. Right. Now it's partner <laughs> rates devalue just like any, any other program. So that doesn't surprise me. So that's at least right now, we're not seeing like the U S carriers start to make partner awards variable. Mm-hmm. The problem is, is if you need to connect, like you're up in Maine and you're not, you're, I just don't think you're getting a nonstop to a lot of European destinations. Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> and so if, if Delta doesn't devalue the partner out of JFK or Boston and you're flying from Bangor or Portland, Maine, what's that? Have, they have an airport too? Uh, yeah, they I, do. I'm it's, just it's, they at least get blue down there in Portland. Oh man. <laughs> there you go. So like if you're, if you're connecting, even if it's like a short, connection delta could technically just 
jack up the price and instead of using the like partner rate of like, I think it's like 75,000 for a one way in business, you add on like a two hour connection, a one hour connection, all of a sudden they're just like, oh yeah, that'll be 140,000. Like, yeah. oh, okay, it's, sure. Like, it's, not, it's not uncommon for me to see 320,000 if oh, I yeah. wanted to do business. I'm like, I'm like, get out of here. I'm like, that's, that's stupid high. You see that out of major airports too, if, especially if there's like a Delta flight on it. And so like, United's moving to that dynamic pricing for its own flights, but not partners. Mm -hmm. Same kind of thing is what we're expecting to see with American going forward. I guess what I don't understand and I wish they would just do is like, just have your saver level and then have a, like the dynamic pricing and another column similar right. to what they do now anyway. Like right. American has the anytime one and anytime two or whatever. Like just have another column where it can be anything. So right. I think United has it, what do they call it, every day? Yeah, they're um, every day. So like just have saver and every day, just like let the everyday chunk vary. Mm -hmm. I don't see why that would be such a problem. But, you know, so that's the U.S. carriers. I haven't, I mean, the foreign carriers haven't really moved that way as much. I mean, some are bad programs, but a lot of them haven't. And even looking at like, I mean, kind of taking a slight turn to like the elite status world, where like the U.S. carriers were the first to like really add this revenue component where you have to spend X amount of dollars per like and it goes up for each tier of status. Right. It's that that kind of stuff hasn't really taken hold all over the world. So right. I'm curious to see how it develops. Um, I think it's the common. I don't know. Theme is like everyone goes, oh, this everything is terrible. It's getting worse. It's always getting worse. It's all going downhill. And it's just. I don't know. I think people are afraid of looking naive, so they just so instead they decide to say that everything is going to be horrible. Um, mm -hmm. I I just say I don't know. Like I honestly like how how are we supposed to know? Like there's so many things that could happen. Like and the economy could dip, or the travel industry could take a dip, or mm -hmm. and how are airlines going to respond? Like I don't know. Um, Get rid of the but, basic economy. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, I mean, it's it's. I think it's definitely something people should be paying attention to, but I don't think we should be kind of, I don't know, agonizing over on a daily basis. And to your point about the portals that banks have with like Amex and Chase, and I, I don't have the U.S. Bank car, uh, Altitude Reserve, but I know like U.S. Bank has its like portal for booking flights. When you can get the like 1.5 cents per point kind of value, I mean, that's already a thing for economy flights, honestly, <laughs> like mm -hmm. especially to Europe. Like, and that's pretty often a better deal than transferring points. And you can even see that to Asia. I mean, mm -hmm. and that's, and we're talking like East Coast Asia. So it's, that's definitely already, like, I feel like that's there. And that's something that people need to pay attention to. Yeah. Um, I, I always tell people, check the portal before you book an award flight, like just run the numbers and see which one's going to require more points. And don't forget that the awards are going to require some cash on top of it. So, like, factor all that in. Um, right. Business and first, like, first class, you don't usually see <laughs> the portals being, like, a better deal for, like, international first class. It's kind of tough to get that kind of value when the flight cash prices are, like, 20 grand um, for a round trip. But the business class, you do see some. Like, there are times we're flying to Europe. It, if you can find a cheaper, like cheap for business class, like fair in the ultimate rewards portal, it's going to be fewer points than if you transferred. Um, you had, I think, at one of your alerts where it was like to Asia on a business class ticket. It was like was it seventy thousand ultimate reward points round trip, or it was like ninety thousand a while back. I can't remember which one it was. What was that? I'm was it a Cathay Pacific? That. Oh, no, I didn't send that one out. I did book that. Uh, that was New Year's Eve. I booked Cathay first starting in Da Nang, coming to the U.S., and then going back. I just figured it's an excuse to see Asia twice. Yeah. Um, but that was like an $850 um, cash ticket. Um, mm. I don't think Cathay was really shooting for that, but, you know, I'm willing to accept it. Yeah. Um, but I booked it for like 58,000 Ultimate Rewards points, um, and I'll that's earn awesome. like 56,000 Alaska miles off of it. So <laughs> no, that's awesome. Okay. I remember, I remember that. That's a pretty awesome amount. That's a... It's another one way back over to uh, yeah, exactly. Asia. <laughs> so, yeah, it's um, but there's one. I did send one out. Um, it was about Air New Zealand at the. That was right after the Cathay New Year's Eve deal. But like early in the year, New, Air New Zealand had some great prices out of. God, I think it was out of Chicago. 
book is it at? Chicago or LA? I can't remember which one it was at this point. But like you could book it through the Ultimate Rewards portal, and that was a great deal at 1.5 cents per point. So I think people should always be checking the portals now. All right. it's, just, it's become too important. Yes, I, I would agree. Um, last question for you. What credit cards are currently in your wallet right now? Well, as I alluded to earlier, the City Prestige. Got to yep. love the 5X. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think what else do I use. I use that a lot. No. <laughs> um, I, I still have... So I've... I have the Chase Sapphire Reserve, and that used to be kind of like my go-to for everything since I spend yep. a lot of time traveling. Mm -hmm. I'm still trying to figure out if it's worth it. Um, I did recently book a business class flight on BA that was a cash fare um, yep. during a sale from New York to Berlin, and that Chase, or there's supposed to be, like the British Airways visa is supposed to have a little like code you can use to get 10% off, but apparently it uses with other, works with other visas. So... Yeah. I use the Sapphire Reserve to get an extra 10%. That's awesome. <laughs> so it's nice to have that. Um, try. I've used the uh, Amex Gold for groceries okay. uh, recently. Um, 4X, I'll take yep. it. Um, I know you, it's really hard to beat that for grocery spending. We, talk, we talked about this before. You've ditched that. Um, yes, yes, I did. <laughs> but it's, uh, I don't have, yeah, I don't have the Target hookup. So uh, yeah. I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think other things I've used. And those are really like go-tos for me. The Amex, like Blue Business Plus, I use for like business stuff, like 2X on everything up to 50K a year. Um, I, I so. love that fact. And you can transfer to partners with no fee. Like to me, that's like one thing American Express, I, I don't, American Express has their quirks, but like yeah. that is one thing they did right with that card. It's like yeah, no fee, one. great earning rates and transfer to partners. Like yep. it, it's hard to beat that. Yeah, for sure. And I think that's one, like it's always with me and I'm, I currently have um, the old SPG business card, which is now like the Marriott something. Business. I can't Unplayed even. Brilliant it. gold, silver, platinum status. Yeah, you know, yeah. one of those. They gave, the, they offered a like a spend bonus for yeah. like six months or whatever. So like if you hit certain spend thresholds each month, so it's basically earning at the old SPG rate. Um, yeah, those bonuses. <laughs> yeah, with the bonus. So now I'm like intentionally using that card every. Uh, for like I can't I don't remember I think it's like five thousand dollars a month or something like that. Yeah. It's like to hit the threshold. So I like make sure that I'm getting that. Um but yeah, the prestige, the Amex Gold, the Sapphire Reserve, the Amex Blue Business Plus, and then occasionally the after I've maxed that out for the business yeah. spend, uh the Freedom Unlimited, like one point five is really nice. Another so, solid card. Another so, solid card in there. It's all just about like what are you trying to do though? I think like I definitely will put and I'm starting to put some spend on the Chase Hyatt card because I'm just like, oh, I can like, I'll just take a free night and some Hyatt points because you hit 15,000 over the course of the year and get that other free certificate. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, it's similar if you want to do that with like the Hilton, um, like Ascend, like mm -hmm. it's a great grocery store earning card and you get a free night at 15,000. Like there's just a lot, lot of like, opportunities out there outside of the normal Chase yeah. cards. Yeah. Just put the puzzle pieces together is what I tell people. Yeah. That's a that's good advice, man. So Spencer, where can people find you at? Everywhere, I feel like. Um, so you can find my writing at God Save the Points. Um, my newsletter is at straighttothepoints.co. Um, and I send probably between one and four a month. Um, mm -hmm. Just kind of depends if I'm traveling. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, I mean, those are the easiest places to find me there. Um, I help run a Facebook community called 10X Travel. Um, and Twitter, God, I mean, I'm just giving you all the places. Twitter, Spencer, at Spencer for Miles, and then Instagram, which I'm supposed to learn how to use because apparently, like, people like pictures of travel. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, straight to I the point. I pictures of that caviar. Is it Krug? Krug, is Krug, it Krug champagne, Krug, yeah. yeah. Um, but, yeah, I'm, yeah, so straight to the points uh, on Instagram. So I'm pretty much just trying to be all over the place if people want to ask me questions about points of miles travel. Awesome. I'll be sure to link those everyone down in the description <laughs> below um, as well. So definitely give Spencer a follow. He puts out some great content. Uh, Spencer, thank you for coming on the channel. I know I have learned a lot from you over the years and just really appreciate all the great information you've put out to like not only help me, but now I feel like what I've learned from you, I'm helping others learn from as well. So I do really appreciate that and I look forward to keeping seeing your, your work. Oh, thanks so much for having me.
appreciate of it. Of course, of course. Hey, everyone, if you like this video, consider giving it a thumbs up. Or if you know somebody who might benefit from this video, feel free to share it with them. And if you want to help support the channel, a simple way is to use the links on our website or in the description below. And if you like learning about credit cards, points, miles, cashback, just flat out traveling for less, consider hitting that subscribe button down below. And until next time, safe travels. Take care, everyone.